today, more Bahamas preparation. Actually, this is kind of preventative maintenance. Katie is going over to Trio to work for the day because Andre and I are gonna get into changing the motor mounts on our diesel engine behind there. So when I sent the injectors away to have them rebuilt, shortly after that, I was getting some more parts and I ended up buying some motor mounts from them uh, just as a preventative thing and I've kept them till now. Well, it seems like we're developing more of a vibration in more ranges of the RPM. So I think it's time to put some new jiggly rubber underneath the engine, some new shock absorption. What do you think? Yeah. Katie's. I want to take a kombucha and a spin drift in my water. All the drinks. Do you want a snack? No. Okay. Hey everyone, I'm Parker. And I'm Katie. And this is our boat, Sea Wind. I bought Sea Wind in 2016 with my entire savings and no clue what it would take to turn her into what she is today. With the help of my dad and a few friends, I slowly tackled project after project, transforming this old boat into what I envisioned when we first met. Halfway through this five and a half year project, I met Katie and we've been inseparable ever since. In truth, this only shows a fraction of what it really took in order to get to where we're at today in a beautiful anchorage making this video. Together, we have come a long way. We have learned the beautiful and brutal lessons that the water has to offer. We have come to know heartache and loss and to dance despite it all. I work a full-time job on the go, which presents its own unique challenges and opportunities. But at the end of the day, it's our desire to move slowly and live fully that makes it all worth it. Sailing Sea Wind is our unique attempt at showing how we choose to live with a lighter carbon footprint, how we plan to make our mark on this ever-changing world. It's a place for us to show that every one of us is connected and that we will all go further together. Check out Katie's new backpack. Yeah, it's her mobile office. Yep. The boys are here. Yeah, man. We're gonna get some work done. Which means basically we're gonna make a mess. <laughs> <laughs> All right, state your uh, name. Stage one. <laughs> <laughs> Parker gets his new motor mounts. We're state excited. your name oh. and you, and one fact about you that no one else knows. Oh, good grief. Andre Silvers and I'm uh, secretly a uh, Parker admirer. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's creepy. <laughs> that just set the tone for the entire episode right there. <laughs> it's going to be titled, My Secret Admirer. <laughs> All right, everyone. Welcome to Changing Engine Mounts with Parker and Andre. As you may already know, Seawind has a Buk DV20 two-cylinder diesel engine. Most Seawinds came with a Westerbeek diesel, but when they built this hull and a few others around that time, Allied, for reasons we will never know, installed this 20 horsepower Buk that, per the information plate, was built in 1977. Now for the task at hand. Most engines are supported by four mounts, one on each corner. They are used to secure the engine in place and absorb torque and vibration. These vibrations are absorbed by the rubber in the mount. As the rubber ages, it dries out and tends to lose its vibration absorbing capacity, which leads to cracking and failure of the rubber and the mount itself. We haven't had a failure yet, but the amount of vibration felt in the boat has significantly increased and the mounts are 44 years old. Most engine mounts are designed with a threaded stud on top with nuts that can be moved up or down to raise and lower each corner of the engine for alignment. The trouble is, these studs often aren't removable, and if they are, corrosion can make them hard to remove. This then would require the heavy engine to be lifted up and over the stud, or sawing the stud off completely if possible. Seawind's Buk has a different style altogether. 
there is a threaded hole in the mount for a bolt to screw down into. This means that you don't have to lift the entire engine and by using a pry bar on each corner, you can easily slide out the old mount and slide the new one into place. The trade-off, however, is that you have to use metal shims in varying thicknesses to raise and lower the engine for alignment. The other design where you can easily screw the nuts up and down for an infinite adjustment range are far superior to this older shim method. There's always a compromise. The first thing you will see us do is separate the propeller shaft from the transmission by removing the bolts that hold the coupling together. This is so that when we are replacing the mounts, we don't put any unnecessary strain on the stuffing box, stern tube, or cutlass bearing. Alright, let's get to it! I can tell, so there's no shims under this one, but you can tell that this, this back one is lifted up. Nice. Okay, that's a good. That's a little higher. That's a little higher. Than that's all right. I figured yeah. they would be. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Well, see how you can see how it's compression. Yeah, ready. Compressing. That's that's pretty damn good. Oh, look at how it's cracked. Look at how the rubber is separated. Mm -hmm. There you go. Yeah, these things have. I'm seeing their better days. Seeing their better days. Look at how it has a. Oh no, it doesn't really have a memory in it. Kind of. Mm -hmm. A little bit. Mm -hmm. I know, I get I, so many oh, different kinds of cramps. I wonder what this one's like. Ah, oh, the rubber's all cracked too. Is it? Yeah. Boy, I'm so glad we're changing these things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Okay, this isn't lining up. Okay. okay. Does that want to stop? No, it has to go back. Back? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Okay, okay right there. Hammer. Oh, no, it started. There it okay. is. Yeah, okay. this okay. is good. Oh, that just went right down in. So. Yeah, it looked pretty good from here. I couldn't see yours because it's too far away, like in the. Uh, this does feel like it's a little bit, uh, a little tight. Okay, lifting. Yeah, right there, that's it. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Nice. Well, let those washers go down all the way on the plate before you tighten right, them up. Right, right, right. Yeah. Good, okay, these are both still loose. We decided to tighten down the smaller front and back bolts first, securing the mounts to the engine beds. 
The larger center bolts would be left finger tight and torqued down last after alignment. This last mount was a bit tricky. I was reaching into the engine compartment from the cabin to try and pry up on the corner, but wasn't strong enough in that position to lift the weight. A bit of rearranging and we had it. So now we have all four motor mounts in and I'm going to get down into the lazarette and Andre and I are going to try and align the prop shaft uh, left and right and up and down. It's going good. You're yeah. on camera. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Love working with you, Parker. Always, Great always. Time. All right. All right, I'll try that first. Oh, there we go. That works for the light. Okay, so the whole thing does have to go over towards starboard more. Get my foot down here. Okay, I moved to the back. Eight, uh, that looks thinner. That looks about the same. That's thicker than that one. I'll push you right where you need to go. You're gonna go right in there. Okay, you're gonna push straight towards the yep. middle of the engine. Okay, mm -hmm. ready? Just don't smack my fingers. I won't. Go ahead. Okay. That's it. Is it in? Yeah. Oh, perfect. Okay. All right. All right, we got to do that on the other side then. Yeah. This coupling is put together, okay? Yeah. And on the top, this .20 doesn't fit in, okay? Okay. It fits in on like, on part of it on the top. And then on the bottom, it fits the whole way. All right, turn that, turn that shaft 180. Yeah. Now, do it again. Okay. Pretty much the same thing. Looks identical. Yep. Uh, it, yeah, it feels identical. Yep. So, we could correct a little bit of that by moving the engine front over to you. Right, exactly. Okay. Wow, I love this thing. This thing is awesome. Okay. All right, so this is loose. Let's try to bump this over. I did. Okay, uh-uh. Okay, that changed things. Okay, can you do a little more of that? Okay, oh, that closed it up here. Oh, that closed it up, Andre. One by one, take these out now. And so with these wood blocks in the back, the, the builders must have shimmed this thing kind of just with the blocks, you know what I mean? And yep. All right, I can, uh, I can take that.
good. cylinder so the flywheel does the balancing but I think it's pretty good. It's even way less vibration than mine. Oh you think? Absolutely yeah. All right. That's a wrap. We did it. <laughs> we did it. Good job. <laughs> All right. Hey. All right. The spoils of a job <laughs> well done. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Yes. <laughs> Another one in the books. Fine job, Parker. Fine thanks, job. thanks. It's always a good time, no matter the project, when we are working together. Thanks again, Andre. This was a fairly big project, but it went smoothly, and the new mounts have made a huge difference in vibrations felt. I am very pleased, and our 44-year-old Book now has a new set of shoes. Early the next morning, a system moved in, and the winds picked up. for some coffee, huh? Katie thinks I'm not being vigilant. I'm just trying to be calm and collected. I just said that. I didn't say that. Katie thinks that I'm being lackadaisical about the wind and the sea state out here. Well, I just wanted a little more. Yeah, no, you wanted me to, <laughs> you literally said that you wanted me to share in your anxiety. <laughs> That's what you said. Yes, you did. You were like, you are being too calm and it's kind of pissing me off. I didn't say that. <laughs> you said... I just wanted you to feel better. like rowdy with me. I am so feeling like, rowdy. Okay. <laughs> All right. Shout out to Mantis for their awesome bridal. Oh, it's so cold. Windy day tacos. Second cup of coffee. We're exhausted. Katie just told me the lack of sleep brings out the dazzle in my eyes. Is that what you said? This, it makes my eyes really twinkle. <laughs> Same to you. You look great with bags. <laughs> <laughs> I know, you don't have bags. Okay, we got eggs and leftovers, beans and stuff. All right, we're gonna dig in. Go. Okay, I don't know what time it is, but update from us. It's like 3.30. Oh, it's like 3.30 already? No, 2.30. 2.30, okay. We 
are deciding to do a dinghy mission to shore. It's calmed down a little bit. A good amount. And so we want to get off the boat and walk around. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna brave it out into the, uh, into the world. Katie and I just did a really nice little stretchy workout movement-y thing. And we worked on some breath holds because we're trying to become free divers. Although static breath holds don't do much. Yeah, uh, yeah, static breath holds don't do much. So we're gonna walk around holding our breath. <laughs> That's seriously what is suggested. Yes. Apnea. apnea walks, yes. Become one with hypoxia. That's basically the uh, the goal. Um. Get on in, no falling overboard. We found ourselves on a road called Española Way, a foot traffic only strip in Miami Beach that is a must see if you are ever in town. Katie's naked. I'm getting naked. What are we doing? We're in the rain. We're showering in the rain. Hopefully it continues to rain. <laughs> it's been pouring. We just finished cleaning up from dinner and we are going to shower and get cold. We're having some cold therapy right now. Yeah. 